Hey guys, welcome back to episode 5. The ECU has arrived from ME and we're installing that today and the wideband and hopefully this car will be running by the end of the episode. Maybe. Here it is then, the ME442. I've waited 12 weeks and one day for this to arrive. So let's unbox it and then start installing everything to the car. If we look at what comes in the box. Warnings. Stickers. Everyone loves stickers. In here we have the actual ECU. That's where all the money goes. And then inside of here is uh, vacuum lines, USB cable, the extended loom for the wideband and the Bosch wideband sensor. So we're going to start with installing that first. All right, we've just rooted this up into the engine bay. I've just put a tie around it so it doesn't fall back down. And I'll pre-tie it, I don't know, maybe to the bracket of the dipstick tube just down there or something. Just keep it away from the downpipe. Um, so now we can drop the car onto the floor. The last thing I really need to do up here. All right, the ECU is down in the passenger footwell. So I'm just gonna pull back all these carpets. I've just taken off the door trim and you can remove these white clips. Um, I'm not gonna take the carpet all the way out, but you see this little kick plate here? The ECU is hidden behind that. So if we move this polyester plate, there's, um, I think, three screws down the bottom. And then there's a couple at the top. So there are two security bolts that have to be drilled out on the bottom. One ECU. Oh, it's gonna be like going back in time. Whoa. Whoa! That's some Windows XP shit right there. Oh, that's old school. He goes there. And that is your old brain. This is a ME442 from Motorsport Electronics. Um, and it utilizes the original um, case. So we've got to make some modifications because we have our map sensor and we also need to plug in the wideband and the uh, USB cable. So there's a couple switches on here as well for the fuel pump types. i bring those in just down here. One of these has to be on depending whether it's an import or a Euro UK car. So because we're in Euro UK, I'm just gonna pop that on. And then we just need to figure out where we want all these cables to run out of. Um.
just plugged that in. And we should connect that Y band sensor down there to that other loom and also run the um, tubing for the map sensor over to the inlet. So I'm probably going to run everything through this grommet here, which is for the aircon, I believe. that you can see straight through to the footwell pretty much so we're gonna run through there and then run all the way across you have to use a port after the throttle body I think I'm gonna use this one down here from the evap Everything is installed now then, I will neaten up the uh, tubing routes and cables once I know the ECU is working. But before we get into any of that, I'm just going to finish off a couple other jobs. We'll fill up the car with coolant. So now we've downloaded a base map to the ECU, we just need to check the base timing before we can start. To do this, we need to open up the ignition driver, the engine driver, and the injection driver. To set the base timing, we set the fixed fire to yes, and then you, if you want to, you can turn the fueling off. We adjust the trigger offset to match the timing marks on the crank to the marks on the engine. Before we start, we also need to change the injector dead time values. This can be found by searching dead times in the search bar and then copying the values supplied with the injectors. Don't forget to change your injector size inside the injection driver. All right, let's check the timing then. You need 12 volt. 12 volt supply, there's a lug nut just in this fuse box down there, which you can take that from. And then this one needs to be earthed, just take it from the earthing on the engine and then attach that to the um, first ignition lead. So the last thing we need to check before we can try and start it then is just to make sure that the boost controller is wired correctly. So I'm just going to go to the inputs and outputs on the um, ECU, check that this is configured correctly and then we'll slip, uh, set this to manual duty and we should hear it buzzing. If you've used the EVAP wiring for the boost controller then you can set LS10 to the boost solenoid under IO setup. And under the boost tab, we can check that we've got the correct solenoid base frequency. And then also under manual duty, put a value in here and then we should be able to hear the solenoid buzzing to make sure that everything is connected correctly.
and I can hear that buzzing now, so I know that is communicating correctly. So that's great. I'm gonna turn that off. So as you see in the car, I actually struggled to start. Um, and this is actually because I made a bit of an error on the ECU setup. So I had forgotten to change the uh, injector sizes under the injection driver. So what we had to do is just change this to 640cc, this is what, which is what we installed. And then we also had to change the spark plugs again because they were soaking wet with fuel. And then, yeah, the car burst into life. So I just checked the timing again with the car running. then just walked around basically checked every the leaks checked there was no oil leaks from the, the feed and for the return for the turbo so the car's gonna be remote tuned so I just was logging the idling to send over to the tuner for mapping Well, there you go. We finally got it running. Had some issues um, with, which pretty much was actually caused by myself. Because not, he's an idiot. Not, fill, <laughs> not filling in some parts of the uh, map correctly. So got those bits wrong. Um, but spoke to my tuner and got that rectified. So now it starts. We've just run it up to temperature whilst logging. Gonna send that off to um, the tuner. I'm gonna get this remote tuned for a little while before I get the clutch put in. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Next, I think we do some POV first drive sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and this just goes to show that we have no mechanical knowledge. We're not mechanics, and um, if we can do it and not mess it up that badly, then so can you. So if you're thinking about buying this kit, it comes with instructions. You only need basic tools. Go for it. Yeah, worst bit is actually removing all of the old shit. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, because so. it's all just corroded, but. Um, yeah. but that was yeah. probably the longest thing that we did, was taking the exhaust off. It was. Yeah. So, yeah. If, if you've enjoyed this series, please drop a like and subscribe because it helps us. We're uh, on our way upwards at the minute, so keep it going. Thank you very much. God bless. <laughs> Any final words, Roberto? <laughs> see, see, see you in the choo-choos. <laughs>